Sarah Williamson Baker. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Wake of TV. Today on the show, we have several interesting topics, but first, we're going to start by talking about the budget. Michelle Venditto is here. She's the interim budget director for Wake County. On June 16th, the Board of Commissioners adopted the budget for fiscal year 2015, and the fiscal year started July 1st. This year's budget is a billion and sixty-six million dollars for this coming fiscal year, which actually started July first. Can you tell us a little bit about how the budget comes together, Michelle? Sure. Um, each year, we just take a look at how our budget had looked last year, and we put out a request to all the departments so that they can submit to us any requests that they have. We can evaluate any changes that need to be made in the budget. Um, as we go throughout the year, the county manager's office will get involved in making final decisions. Then we present that budget to the commissioners um, as the recommended budget that the county manager presents. And then the public has an opportunity to voice their opinions, their thoughts at our public hearings, and then, right, when we get to June, we have that final adopted budget. So this year, there were a lot of priorities for the county manager to consider. Can you tell us some of those? Sure. Um, you know, as we were going through the process, it seemed like there were kind of two major issues. Um, coming out of the recession, um, you know, we went through five years where budgets were reduced, um, funds were restrained or constrained, and we saw a lot of the requests were associated with workload demand, so for staffing, and then secondly, just over those five years where departments had to take reductions, that there were some operating funds that you know just were not, they were holding tight, and departments were really starting to struggle with some of that. So those were um, kind of the first area, and then really it was education, secondly. Um, the school board made a request for additional funding, and we really had to, that was a big part of the decisions we made this year. Michelle, can you share with our viewers some of the items, other than the education ones, because we'll get to those in just a second, that came into the budget? I know there was a lot of things related to public safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with public safety, there was funding added for um, EMS. We increased some staffing and some training equipment in order to, you know, continue with our quality care that we provide to the county citizens. Additionally, CCBI will have two new chemists this year. There has been a statewide push and initiative to address some DUI infractions. So throughout the county and throughout the state, there have actually been additional um, police and deputies put on the streets. Additionally, we've added two courthouse deputies in the budget to ensure safety, safety in our judicial spaces. And then in terms of public safety, we also added a computer-aided dispatch administrator. This is part of a larger initiative to upgrade our CAD system, which is the system which enables the communications between all of our public safety agencies. So that position will enable that to move forward. We also added seven positions related to um, residential and commercial development in both the planning department and in the water quality department to um, address some of those workload needs. And then lastly in human services, there was the addition of 10 school nurses. So um, as you said, you know, and I, as I said, education was very critical and looking at those school nurses um, was a high priority. So school nurses are a great transition to education. The county spends a a large part of its operating budget mm -hmm. supporting Wake Tech in the school system. Can you tell us about some of the increases in those areas? Sure. Um, well, in Wake Tech, for Wake Tech, the counties in North Carolina are responsible primarily for operating and maintenance, whether that's staffing or equipment, um, funding for those types of things. Additionally, um, we provide startup costs. So this year, the Vernon Malone College and Career Academy will be opening, and that's a partnership between Wake County, um, the Wake Tech, and the school system. So their first year funding will be providing some funding for that. Um, a, a large part of our budget goes towards education. Um, again, the the county is responsible largely for operating maintenance, for school building construction, for infrastructure. Additionally. Um, counties provide additional instructional resources, whether it's, um, you know, just direct supply funds, 
um, technology funds, um, a, you know, teacher supplement came up this year again. Um, and so this year we have kind of made further um, investments in education. So the last question, Michelle, is the school's budget. It sounds like there's going to be some ongoing discussions about how that all works together over the next few months. Yes. Um, throughout the fall, uh, the school system will, you know, get their final numbers from last year. They'll be able to determine, you know, how their year ended. And then we'll find out what occurred at the state. They'll, you know, finalize their budget. And then uh, the county manager and the superintendent will be meeting to identify what next steps might be. Um, if there's additional funding requirements and then just kind of planning for improved collaboration in the future so that you know, we can kind of move forward together. That sounds like a fantastic route to go. It certainly does. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being with us. Eric Curry will be here to share with you what's being done to inspect food vending establishments. Stay tuned. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today, I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. Welcome back. Well, it's that time of year where citizens are hitting outdoor festivals and events that seem to crop up almost every weekend in this area. And one of the highlights of these events is stopping by the food vendors who represent all types of cuisine that they bring the kitchen on wheels hoping to lure you in. But how do you know if these food trucks are safe to eat from? James Smith is the environmental health specialist with the Wake County Environmental Services Division who joins us to talk about the importance of inspecting food trucks. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you. James, first of all, food truck vendors are becoming very, very popular in this area. How much more of a workload is placed on inspectors this time of year? Actually, the, the food truck business isn't as seasonal as you'd expect. Um, they're certainly a lot more visible now because they're out at, at the events and the festivals and things. Um, but really, the food truck business is year-round. Um, any day of the year, you could go to uh, an office complex or, or clubs or other places that people would gather and, and see them operating. James, is there a difference in inspecting, let's say, a brick-and-mortar restaurant, restaurant versus a mobile food truck or stand? Uh, certainly, yeah. The, the biggest difference is has to do with the fact that they're actually mobile. So unlike your typical brick and mortar restaurant, um, they actually have to carry their water supply with them and they carry their wastewater with them. Um, so uh, we do need to make sure that we're focusing on those things as we do our inspection. Uh, want to make sure that uh, the water supply is protected and that they're not leaking wastewater onto the roads. Um, other than that, the basics are still the same. Uh, they need to be holding foods at the proper temperatures, they need to be using proper food handling techniques, um, and they need to be keeping things clean. Mm -hmm. Are food vendors required to take any more extra precaution than, let's say, the brick and mortar restaurants? Um, our rules don't really single out food trucks for extra scrutiny. Um, but all of the operators really have to be on their toes as far as maintenance goes. The restaurant equipment that a lot of the food trucks use, for example, isn't really meant to be hauled around in a truck, so there's a lot of extra uh, wear and tear on that equipment. Plus, they do need to uh, make sure that they're servicing those, uh, the water systems. How often are food vendors inspected? Uh, food trucks and push carts are typically inspected two to three times a year. And how are you able to inspect vendors that may be based outside of Wake County and they show up for certain big events, let's say here in downtown Raleigh. Yeah, food truck and push cart uh, permits are actually uh, valid throughout the state, okay. but that also means that they're uh, eligible to be inspected in any county that they're operating in. So uh, if one of our inspectors has the opportunity to inspect one, uh, they're certainly welcome to do that, and then we would share that inspection information with the home county of the truck. And what are some of the areas food inspectors look for? Um, you know, basically the, the, the main emphasis is the same, whether you're talking about um, food trucks or brick and mortar restaurants. Uh, you want to make sure that they're uh, cooking and holding foods at the proper temperatures, um, that they're using uh, good food handling techniques, 
um, you know, basic cleanliness and those water systems are, are still very important, um, but in the end it's going to be uh, an employee that's not washing their hands or uh, employees not properly cooking the food that's going to lead to people being sick. And as always, what do you uh, advise citizens to do uh, when they decide whether or not to visit one of these trucks? Sure. It's certainly the most important thing that the citizens need to be watching out for is to make sure that it's a truck that they know is permitted um, and that has been inspected. Um, food trucks are like restaurants in that they're required to have a grade card posted and that grade card will give them a pretty good idea as far as the, the general sanitation of the truck. Um, beyond that, um, you know, most of the food trucks do uh, need electricity and most of them use generators to generate that electricity. So if, uh, if somebody was to come upon a food truck that had a generator and that generator was turned off, I probably would not uh, suggest that they dine there because they're probably having big problems. Okay, James Smith, Environmental Health Specialist with Wake County Environmental Services, thank you, much. thank you so much for being here. Thank you. When we return, we'll introduce you to the county's newest hydrogeologist. Stay tuned. So, I'm kinda new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. In an effort to protect the quality of life in Wake County, the Water Quality Division seeks to ensure that all of the water resources in the county are healthy and sustainable and the surface waters are not contaminated. In an effort to support this comprehensive approach, the county recently hired its first hydrogeologist, Dr. Caroline Loop. Dr. Loop joins us on WakeGov TV for the first time. Welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. First of all, besides the fact that I had to practice saying hydrogeologist uh, several times over and over again so I wouldn't stumble, a lot of folks want to know what is a hydrogeologist? A hydrogeologist is someone who's knowledgeable about the flow of water beneath the land surface. So for example, when it rains, a portion of that water moves down below the land surface and is not taken up by plants. It, so it moves through the soil and then down into the cracks and pores of bedrock. And why is it important to have a hydrogeologist or yourself become a part of the staff here in Wake County? Well, Wake County has over 30,000 residential water supply wells and um, over 3,000 residential wells have been permitted in the last decade. So it's those wells that draw from the cracks and the pores in the bedrock and that's how people obtain their water. And when we talk about the common issues that the county must continue to monitor, what, what are some of those? They're known contaminated sites in the county, and it's important to us to know where those are and the status and the types of contaminants in, that, in those sites um, and where they are in terms of soil contamination or groundwater contamination. So that's something that we monitor and try to keep track of. Another thing that we look at is rainfall and, and water levels as early indications of drought. So it's a quality issue as well as a quantity issue for groundwater in and, Wake County. And is that something that you plan on monitoring? How, how do you monitor that? Um, well, we, we've been meeting with, uh, with Diener to get their databases and, and integrate their data in a way that um, when someone applies for a well permit, we can check the, the system and see if there's a known contamination site around them. Well, what can citizens who own wells do to help preserve the quality of the groundwater? It's a great question. Um, it's important to keep any hazardous chemicals away from your well, such as um, pesticides or fertilizers or paint or motor oil, to, to physically remove them from the well so it doesn't become contaminated. Also, uh, people can visually inspect their wells and, um, and just like any other system in your house, like a heating or air conditioning system, uh, you might, it's recommended to uh, have someone inspect your well system and your water system in your house periodically. Health and Human Services uh, recommends that private well water owners sample their wells each year for bacteria, every two years for 
VOCs and metals in every five years for pesticides and herbicides. So it's really something if you're a private well owner, there's, there's standards of care and maintenance that, that you should be aware of. Okay. And what are some of the initiatives you and, and your, your staff uh, hope to address in, in the coming months? As, as we mentioned, we're tracking the contamination and uh, getting more of that information, and we plan to have investigations around some of those sites where there are private wells and help inform people who use those wells uh, about the care and proper maintenance of their wells to ensure that they have healthy drinking water. I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that in the coming months. I hope so. Thank All right. you. Dr. Luke, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Coming up, we'll share with you what's being done to successfully preserve farmland in Wake County. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. <laughs> you should pick that up. Every day, kids <laughs> witness bullying. Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. In 1986, the North Carolina General Assembly passed the North Carolina Farmland Preservation Act to authorize counties to undertake a series of programs to encourage the preservation of farmland, in addition to enabling counties to create voluntary agricultural district ordinances, which Wake County adopted in 2002. Farmland preservation continues to be one of the board goals adopted by the Wake County Board of Commissioners. Adams Vineyards is just one example of the support Wake County's Soil and Water Conservation District staff provide for farm owners like the Adams family. The property that you're standing on here um, is the original uh, land grant from the King of England back in the 1700s. I'm the eighth generation that's lived and farmed on this farm. Also the fourth, John Quincy Adams, that's lived in the home place. The farmland preservation has, has actually helped us stay on the farm. I mean, it's, we don't get a lot of monetary benefit from it, but there's just the media attention and the government, the Wake, Wake County government, pushing it and wanting it has helped us out. The Wake Soil and Water Conservation Department of Wake County Government uh, actually works with our farm landowners by uh, providing cost share to help them put in best management practices. We also provide technical um, specifications as well as technical assistance to help them install the conservation practice and maintain the conservation practices. We provide everything that is technical based on USDA guidelines, but at the same time, because we're non-regulatory, we're that office where they can come and talk to us about issues and help work with them to come up with solutions so we save the taxpayers money. Um, we are also that department that provides guidance and workshop, environmental education, uh, advocacy from citizens, everything that they need to go out and actually do the work themselves. Having a department like the Soil and Water Conservation District is invaluable to a farmer. They help us, um, first they help us to uh, conserve the natural resources that a farmer needs, soil and water. Without soil and water, you can't grow anything. Um, also having them to help us comply with regulations that we may not know about, that they're trained and very knowledgeable about is, again, that's invaluable. The Wake County Economic Agricultural Development Plan, which is our farmland preservation plan, benefits both the 900,000 population of Wake County as well as our farm and rural community. Uh, it benefits, first of all, because of farmland preservation. When you have our legacy farms, our wonderful farms that produce crops that we can either intake or they add to the economic um, revenue stream, um, the community of Wake County as a whole benefits economically. But it also benefits our community because we have such a large suburban population, urban population with local foods. They get fresh nourishing foods that they can easily access. They can get pick your owns. And we have open lands, we have green space that's accessible, all because we preserve farmland. So everyone benefits. The farmer also benefits from programs being able to have access to government programs that will help them maintain their farmland through these challenging times, uh, help address resource problems, help address conservation problems, help address transportation problems. And because we include all of the interagencies 
in and addressing these problems, the farmers benefit, the citizens in our suburbia benefits, and what happens is that we get cleaner air, we have cleaner water, we have healthier children because they're outside. Uh, we have healthier citizens overall because they have access to local foods. And, and we actually have a healthier economy too because it's balanced. And we're glad that our county commissioners adopted the Wake County Economic, Agriculture Economic Development Plan uh, because everyone benefits from it. Well, we are, Wake County Commissioner is all about our farmers, agriculture, and we support you. And I think you farmers know that, especially those with the Farm Bureau and Dale and uh, whatever we can do uh, where farms can be passed on down to generation after generation and not try to tax them to death and stand up for them. So, and uh, growing up on a farm myself, I certainly realize that. Adams Vineyards, like I said, is the first one in the triangle, and it's the eighth generation, I think, Quincy in the family of, of, of taking this business over. And it's a great an example of something uh, Dale talks about a lot, is farmland preservation. And we've got to preserve what we've got in Wake County, because we still are a farm county, and uh, we've got to watch out for that. And as commissioners, we do support agriculture all over our county and where we've got opportunity to be. Right now, the county has more than 800 farms in Wake County, 800 farms, and over 85,000 acres of farmland. And it's a $73 million industry in Wake County. That's pretty doggone good. Having the support of the commissioners is very important because they're the ones that we have issues that we can go to and discuss. It's, it's kind of hard to nail down one person as large as Wake County government is in a department. And having an elected official that's, that understands farming is, is huge because we run into issues that most everyday people don't run into. This is a great part of Wake County, uh, the Adams Family Vineyard. Uh, the, this, this farm has been here for generations. As a matter of fact, uh, Quincy Adams, the son now, uh, he's an eighth generation. Uh, son taking this business over, like this building and behind us all the vineyards of Scuppernong grapes here and across the road and new varieties down the street here uh, is a big part of the way things are changing in Wake County. We've got to take care of our farms. The farms are shrinking, but the, the nature of the farming business is changing from tobacco and cotton and corn to uh, things like uh, uh, grapes and vineyards uh, and people growing trees for agriculture and development. So things are changing. But it's a big part of our industry here, so we really support our farm families. We want to keep them handed down and handed down and keep them going because, you know, we eat three meals a day and we owe, owe that to farmers. So in Wake County, it's a big part of income coming in. It's like a $87 million uh, industry. And so we support our farmers. We want to keep going, and Wake County is a great place to be. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. The Wake County Public Library System offers a wide range of activities and services for readers of all ages and sizes. And Wake County Libraries will kick off this month a series of more exciting programs for those readers and patrons. Joining us to talk about many of the programs is Ann Burlingame. Uh, Assistant Director of the Wake County Library System. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. First and exciting news every, always at Wake County Libraries, but this summer in particular, can you talk about uh, a particular program, summer reading program that always is a hit amongst teens? Um, yes, we are offering our summer reading program and the theme is Spark a Reaction. And what we're doing is we're offering programs for children and adults, um, and we've expanded our programs for school-age children. Now, you talk about uh, programs for children out of school. What are some of those special activities? Well, we are, have added in July 50 programs for school-age children, and they're called the School Age Super Special. And what these are is we're inviting performers and presenters and lots of different experiences for children. Uh, we are we're going to have a mobile gem mine 
we're going to have um, Crocs House of Reptiles, so that we'll be bringing in different reptiles to the library. We're going to have a magician, Fish the Magish will be there. And then we're also going to have a program called Stones and Bones. And Stones and Bones is about fossil hunting. So these programs will all be offered in July and they will be offered throughout the Wake County Public Library system. And what about a reading program for school-aged ch children? All children between kindergarten and the fifth grade can come to the library. They get a book bag. They get a reading log to keep track of their books. And when they visit the library, they can earn stickers. And they get these stickers for talking to a librarian about what they're reading, going to one of our programs. And every week we have what we call a weekly wow. And that's a special special prize for school-aged children when they check out three or more books. And of course you cannot forget about the teens and adults during the summer as well. Right, and we have a program for adults and teens that's very similar this year and when they come to programs or check out books they will be entered in a raffle or a drawing to win special prizes. And those prizes uh, are are varied in nature, correct? They are, and they're just really great. We've had such support from our communities. We have spa packages. We have certificates to um, sporting events, to the theater, to movies, to restaurants. And at the end of the program, we're going to give three grand prizes, and one of those is a Google Nexus. Okay. What are some of the specific programs for adults? Well, we have programs um, about arts and literature, recreational reading, career and education, and some of those sp specifics are we have one called Meet the Mystery Writers, and that's going to be 15 mystery writers, including Margaret Marin and Sarah Shaver. We have a computer um, workshop called Intro to Cloud Computing. We're also going to have a um, architectural firm come and talk about North Carolina architectural uh, architecture. And then we have um, a workshop on the changes that have happened to the high school equivalency test, the GED. Great, and we cannot forget about the uh, readers age five and younger. Yes, the um, zero to five children. Uh, we will continue to offer 160 programs per week for this population. They also have their very own Read to Me Reading Club, and we are offering that in partnership with the PNC Foundation and the Grow Up Great Grant. So the Reading Club is called Spending, Saving, and Sharing, and it's really, its purpose is to teach young children, preschoolers, financial literacy. And great, and, and so for folks in Eastern Wake County and all of Wake County, how can they find out more about the summer reading program and any of the events going on in Wake County Libraries? Well, we always want you to visit your local library, but we also have an incredible website that's rich with information and you can look at what's going on at your own library, um, you can look at what's going on in the system, so I really encourage you to look at our website too. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Keep up with the latest news and information by visiting us online at the new wakegov.com slash news or on Facebook or Twitter. That's our show for today. Thanks for watching.